like for her to turn over the Book of Amos. Book of Amos, that's, uh, what's that other track? Joel. Joel. Amos is right after Joel. <laughs> Chapter 8, verse 11. We had a good, uh, I thought a good service today. We had a good crowd. Lord bless and uh, pray for that brother and his wife. He said he'd be back. He enjoyed the fish coming up. But I want to read them, several of them went with us. How many went with us to roll from County Night and Revival down there? Several of that what? Jimmy was leaving in. Jimmy went in every night, I believe, as far as I know. Uh, I worked for my neighborhood. Yeah, he went. And uh, little church, and the man got mad at me and stuck a shotgun in my face, going to blow my head off of her. His boy accepting Christ as his Savior. Fourteen year old kid born into another Lord. And, uh, he pulled up in front of the church, and I told him while he was pulling the trigger, I prayed for him, go ahead. He threw the gun in the back seat, spun out of there and flying. And uh, a couple weeks later, he was just drunk. His wife was fixing supper. Who was J.D. Street? Is that how it is? J.D. J.D. Street. And he went down behind the woodshed and Tucked the gun under his chin. And all he had done was loose as I fell on his knees and asked the Lord to forgive him. But <clears throat> I never have been scared of no shotguns or no guns of no kind and anybody wanted. I've had two go on in my ministry. And I never have been scared of them because I've trusted in God. And I hadn't done nothing to worry about, and God said he'd take care of me, and he did. Amen. I want to tell this. Billy Forbes had a little church up at Southern Street time. And uh, I was young, a whole lot younger than him. And uh, I had no idea who lived above the church, but somebody parked the 68 Pontiac. The porch was level with the ground, and the door went in the doors, and we had a rock altar behind the church. and we, Car sitting there, and just a little, little distance between there and the roof of the fort. And I got to preaching that night, and the Holy Spirit of God got a hold of me, and I couldn't help it. Man, I like it when you can't help it. Bless you. I took off running down the aisle and skipping on one lake, and the door opened. There was their own door. Now you went down the aisle, but the door was open, and I went and cleared that Pontiac. And come down out of the sky to land in the middle of the road, and the boy run off in the field and coming down the road. And he got out of the car and run into church. He said, Somebody come and pray for me right quick till the angel fell out of the sky after a while ago. Amen. God said, You did the same angel was unaware. I was that unaware fellow coming out of the sky. And Louise will tell you, had a good revival in him, And the next night, his wife came and said she wanted to know that same God. Now listen, this power people, he was headed to the store the night that I come, that the Lord had me run. The preacher asked foolish. You know the Bible says by the fools of the gospel as people get saved to him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, ha it had to be that night the way it was because he was going to the store to get a loaf of bread and some bananas and make a sandwich and they were going to kill one another. I uh, it's suicide. And God had a plan. <laughs> I'm glad I was part of the plan. Next night his wife come down and she told that story he didn't tell me about that. He's going to kill seven by and go on eternity. But she said, I'd like to, he was praying, I'd like to know that God. He prayed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I've been in some good places. Amen. Gouges Creek Baptist Church. I uh, didn't believe in hell or heaven, but boy, he did after he got up for that night. And the banks went to move and wouldn't let him out. And 
and he said to the Lord, and he said, I, if you'll help me up, I'll pray and ask God to save me, and he got saved. Death all the lights on that mountain went out, but the, the lights in the church, even the porch light on the church. He sent an electrician over there, and he said, I ain't going back over. He said, ain't a lot on that mountain, but that church, the little church over there, and he said, I ain't going back. But you know what makes it a good name? When you really get to needing God. Now listen to me. And God scares the devil out of you. That's what happens. God scares the devil out of you. Amen. You don't want to die, you want to go home. Amen. But just for a little bit there, in the book of Amos, if you found your place, chapter 8, book of Amos in verse 11, this is what he said. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Now listen to what it says. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but for hearing the words of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Did you ever read that before, Brother T? There's got to be a famine one of these days. Yeah. That people is really, you talk about this church is, has grown in the last year. I think it has. They don't come all the time like they should. And some, uh, if Jimmy had listened to me and married away in the hill days to get in church and live for God, he wouldn't be over here in jail. Amen. Amen. I'm just truthful about it. I mean, my daddy was a bootlegger, and I dreaded his daddy with the limbs that he had, but uh, I never had to worry about jail because uh, daddy was a drunk, and he'd come in drunk, and, and you didn't uh, do what he said. You got your britches trimmed real good. Mom would have to back patch it. Amen. But the whole of days come. Last, that's exactly about like they say about Jesus. No man knows, don't you listen to this, no man knows the day nor the hour when it comes. Did you know God himself don't even know? Did you show me that in the Bible if it's in there? But I've never found it. You just say, boy, what God knows when he's coming. And I'm going to tell you what God does know. When Jesus looked down and said, Father, it's time for me to go get to church. You better watch out for the eastern sky because he's going to split her wide open. Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. I don't care when he comes, I'm ready. If he'd come tonight, it'd be a wonderful time. But he said, I will send a family. You know what, Brother Philip, is a lot of people were, and I know you believe it, has got little kids and families, and they're living in a day when they're really living in the family. You know what family is? A need of something, a want of something. And they people that's hungry, and people say, well, I wouldn't give water to the jug. And I told the person the other day, uh, made that quotation, I said, I'm going to tell you, I'd be ashamed to say that, and you claim to be a victim of your church. Come on, man. If you've got no heart inside of you that you wouldn't give nobody in here a drink of water, you need to get in this altar tonight. Because the Bible says you have to love everybody. Amen. And he said, now listen to what he said. That found not a famine of bread or thirst of water, but a learn by the words of the Lord. Now I want to tell you something like that. When I preached the revival in Fort Creek Baptist Church in Ralston County, been about it's been five years, ever bit of it, ain't it? Five years ago I had my ninety two New Yorker, I was telling Brother Lane. I believe you should tell them Brother Lance back. And the motor needed some work on it. I didn't have the money to fix it. The preacher down there didn't say anything. And you'll never, has anybody in here ever heard me ask the church for a dime? I'd like to, I will somebody else. But you'll never hear me beg for nothing. Because God said he'd make a way for me. Come on. And down there the preacher kept the notice by saying it. Louise remembered and read about him. Bring the preacher a pounding tomorrow night. Well, Friday night when they opened the trunk and said, I want to see his car, and I was in there talking to the preacher, and they opened the open trunk of my car, and when I got out there, I thought I was going to have to jack it up and put extra springs on it. 
had 29 big bites of groceries and sent them back to them now. And at that time, my kids were having it hard. Your kids had the same thing. Something needed something to eat. Their family needed food. And my kids wanted to get to work like I did and all this and that and the other. And I divided that with my kids and we all had something to eat. He stuck a little envelope in my pocket and I thought, well, I'll have some to eat, but I'll get the fix later. He stuck a little envelope. I'm just telling this for the glory of God because God told me to. And I stuck it in my pocket, a little envelope, and he said, they ain't going to throw a few dollars in there. and said, that'll help you a little bit, preacher. We love you and appreciate you. And when I got home, I told Louise, I forgot about it, and I said, here's a little envelope he gave me, and I pulled it out, and it's like $2 for having $800 in it. $600 fixed the car. I paid for gas bill for going there and back. Lucy, God said, I'll make a way. For the same. So they know it. And I don't have the most money I've ever got in the gospel I preached. At one time, for preaching in the revival. I preached revival one time at the same church years ago and got $6. And $6 paid back in for the gas. <laughs> what the 14 is in the gallon. But I want to say this. Don't never hesitate to go when God wants you to go, money or no money. Put your faith in Him, trust Him for the trip, trust Him for everything Philip and do, and God will make a way. Oh, I want to ask you, what did they tell you about the baby? Um, I'm going to go back next week. Next week. So they're going to tell them where they set the car seat or not. Because uh, when they went Thursday, they had the regular stop. Amen. So it is famine not of bread nor water, pinto beans and our spaders, but they going to be a famine one day for the word of God. Amen. And these people that don't preach the word are going to pay for it. Amen. Bible says, verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and trust to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Come on. Now, you preach, you got any Bible straight? Yes, sir. He said, one day you'll call on me and I'll not answer. Never is, ever will answer. He said, the day you'll call, I won't answer. The day you'll seek me and I won't be there. That's, that's what he's talking about. Amen. But when he comes, Thank God I ain't looking for a loaf of bread, Brother Tig, or a tomato sandwich. I'm looking not for a hole in the ground, but a hole in the sky. Amen. Whoa! Amen! Talk about the happy, 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 happy. And people are just seeking the Lord, Brother Lance, and can't find What the Bible, in my quote the Bible, right? He says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Call upon him while he. Is near. Right. Amen. So we need to seek him. Now he when he when we got saved, he seeked us. Yeah. You didn't seek the Lord. He seeked you. But after you get saved, sometimes you gotta start seeking him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Say, Lord, here I am. Amen. I told you before, and I'll tell you again, my brother Junior was a preacher, Mary Sue's the Michael Singer, his daddy. And he one drove to church one night and just gave in on this and he said, I can saw the same thing. Didn't have no money. He said, These two old women come out of the church and said, Brother Junior, would you take us home tonight so we don't have a ride? And they said he said, Yeah, I said, I never thought of them back because they just took them home. And when they got there, both of them throw five dollars piece in the seat and said, Lord wants me to give you that for gas. Now tell me God won't make a way. Amen. God said, I'll make a way where there seems to be no way. I'll, he said, I'll, I'll make the crooked path straight. I'll straighten it up for you if you'll just let me. Amen. Amen. But you know, those people listen to me, and I'm going to say a real plain. Those people that intend to go to hell, no matter what you say or do for them. Just yes, got that old stubborn mind. I don't have to listen to you. Come on. Yep. But I'll never forget the Saturday. A few weeks ago, I had that. Hard rain on Saturday. It just pleased me. He wasn't from Morton, and I never seen him. But he got up 
He took his umbrella to quit eating breakfast and laid it in her after the car with an umbrella and come back and got me. That's love. Amen. Amen. That's love. That's love. No greater love. That little girl up here in the Amish country said, kill her and let, uh, kill me and let her live. No greater love has anybody lay down their life for a friend. You know what? Can't you imagine that? Come on, church. Can't you just imagine your little old mind? I know it's like mine ain't bigger than a pea. But the, <laughs> amen. I'm just talking. But can't you just imagine how sweet heaven was with this secretary dying? Amen. Oh, God, amen. The Bible said, may I read? In that day shall the fair virgins, thank you, and young men faint. I tell people, I don't know where you get this. God may be a queer. God may be a living. God has never made nobody that kind of person. God made Adam for Eve and not Adam for Steve. And I'll tell you right now, I don't know about everybody else. Me and my wife, we we jump on one another like cats and dogs sometimes, like you do. <laughs> I ain't blaming you. I just said that for you to you feel the raw piece in the back of it. So I, she'll say, there's no way you're going to fuss with him. He always lays on fire. At least that's what it's made for. Amen. I thought it was going to go back in and enjoy it. But God's good to us. God gives us a mind. You know how good God is? I had a load of brush on my truck the other day, and I need to get them off. We were talking to Doug about he was, he was busy and he didn't have time to love. You know, I know everybody's like that. He's got something to do. And I told Louise, a friend of mine up here, and got a hole line put that in. I'm going to take it up front and unload it. Well, I got about a half of it off, and Brother Zeke gets wrapped up in vines and all that. You couldn't pull it off. The Lord said, Why don't you open the toolbox? Take your rope and run through the crooks of that limbs on the next to the tailgate and take them back there and look at that tree and give you a truck. And I did, and it all come off. Amen. Ben, that's pretty good, ain't it? God will give you tell you what to do if you'll do it. Amen. God tells us tonight, I'm going to put a claim. God tells us tonight to love one another as He loves us. Amen. He tells us to give our life to the church as He did in His day. And the Bible said, now listen, in that day shall the fair virgin and young men faint for thirst. I don't know about everybody else. I don't know what it is, but somebody may have the same problem. Seems like with the night, I hate to wake up in the morning with a dry mouth. And I guess I'm just drying it. But the Lord's good to let me live, and I give him a drink of water, I'm all right. God's good to us, folks, and we'll pray. Amen. 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 How good is it? You raise your Bible way up in there. Now, come on, pick that Bible up. Lord, let me get down the water here. Pick it way up and say, Lord, you're the greatest God I know. Lord, you're the greatest God I know. And I mean it. Come on, let's pray and have a good week. Amen. Well, glory.